Okay, we Good are connected. Morning, <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Joseph already is. Good morning, everybody. Okay, we're a little late. Uh, we're two minutes late because I had uh, connection problems initially. Didn't want to connect. But anyway, today is Tuesday. Uh, let's get the date right. It's September 26th. Okay. September 26th, everybody, Tuesday morning. And today we have a very short gospel, but it's a very interesting, um, very interesting gospel from St. Luke, chapter 8, 19 to 21. Okay, it's about Our Lady. The mother of Jesus and his brothers came to him, but were unable to join him because of the crowd. He was told, your mother and your brothers are standing outside and they wish to see you. He said to them in reply, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. Okay, a few things to clarify here. Okay? This was a time when Jesus must have been so busy in his uh, public ministry, in his public life. Right? That, uh, you know, he was going from town to town. He was going all over uh, Jerusalem, Judea, and all sorts of other places to preach the word of God, right? To 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 reveal the Godhead to to each and every one of uh, his hearers. And perhaps he could not go home very often to marry, right? And so uh, maybe Our Lady, uh, you know, was getting so anxious because there was also plenty of talk that uh, the Pharisees were uh, were hunting him down and were finding ways to. Uh, to, to put him to death, right? So Our Lady must have grown anxious and was trying perhaps to see, you know, how her son was doing. And so she, she perhaps uh, got wind that, oh, Jesus is in this place. So she tries to go with some of her relatives. Eh? The word brother, eh? the word brother here being used in the gospel does not mean to say that Mary had other sons and other children, okay? No, the word brother in uh, Hebrew and uh, the way they were using it uh, among the Jews is that uh, it meant that uh, it meant relatives, it meant cousins, it meant uh, uh, close neighbors, okay, close relations. What is that, honey? Oh, okay. What is that? Oh, we got some invasion. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Where'd he go? Over there. Sorry for that distraction. We got a little bit of uh, an insect, a bug here crawling on me. Yeah, bug. Yeah, bug. Anyway, so uh, that's what the word brother means. So when Our Lady went over to Jesus, she was accompanied by uh, perhaps uh, the, her, her relatives, right? Jesus' so-called brothers, rel relations. And so um, they were trying to uh, see if they could meet Jesus. But Jesus was was occupied with his preaching. Jesus was surrounded by plenty of people that there was just no room for, uh, for Our Lady and, uh, and her relatives to be able to uh, get through. Okay? But he was told, Jesus was told, hey, your mother and your brothers are here. They want to see you. Now Jesus took this opportunity not to dismiss Our Lady as being insignificant because that's how it might seem like, right? Oh, you know what? No, that's not my mother. That's not my relatives. My relatives, my mother, are these people here who are listening to the word of God and are acting on it. Okay? At first glance, at first reading, that's what it might seem, right? Oh, my mother, she's not important. What's more important are these people listening to me. But you know what? That is not really what Jesus meant. See? What Jesus actually meant when he said, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and act on it. Well, guess what? Who, guess who is the first person who was most faithful to the word of God? And who acted on the word of God very faithfully? Who? The Blessed Mother. That's precisely the Blessed Mother, right? Precisely the Blessed Mother was and is the most faithful of all the creatures of God, the most faithful of all the relations of God, of Jesus Christ. Right? So when he said, my mother and my brethren are those 
who hear the word of God and, and act on it, he was actually praising Our Lady's fidelity. He was actually uh, extolling Our Lady's virtues uh, and making her the, uh, the example for everybody to follow. That yes, my mother, oh, she was the most faithful person that, uh, that, that ever was who walked the earth, right? There was the most faithful uh, person um, there is. So, and, and, and to be like my mother, right? To be like my mother, you also have to hear, not only hear the word of God and make it go from one ear and exit the other, but rather hear the word of God and act on them. See? Act on the word of God. So that is what uh, Jesus wants us to understand in today's gospel. Okay? Now, when we say hear the word of God, hear the word of God. When you say word of God, well, that's synonymous to, uh, to several things. And uh, we, could, we could say that the word of God is really the will of God. Right? What God wants to communicate to us, to each and every one of us. What God wants to express to us. Now, God communicates to us in many different ways. We get to know the will of God and the word of God for us in many different ways all throughout the day. Can you give me some, some examples of where we can hear and understand the word of God and the will of God for us? Parents. Huh? Parents. From your parents. Number one, from your parents. Very good, right? Our parents are uh, the instruments of God to Tell us, to tell us, show us, and show us the way okay, to heaven. Show us the way to God by, by telling us, uh, teaching us not only directly the precepts of God, but showing us by a good example what God uh, wants from each and every one of us. Guiding us in every way, advising us in every way, right? Where else do we, under, do we hear and understand the word of God? At church, of course, right? At church, through our pastors, um, through their homilies, right? That's why you pastors better give good homilies. You better prepare for your homilies. They, oh, Father Benny from Italy is with us today. Hi, Father Benny. You came at the right time. I was just talking about how priests should be preparing their homilies. <laughs> because that's one way, because we hear the word of God through preaching of priests. Very true. And how they interpret the, the gospel and the word of God for us, right? Oh, and speaking of the gospel, well, we're right here every morning at breakfast, right? Doing the gospel commentary. This is also another way by which we hear the word of God, right? What other ways, Joe? Sorry, I can't understand you. What's that? <clears throat> what? Where? <clears throat> Okay, well, you, when, we have, uh, when, when the priest advises us through confession, right? Confession is another way where we hear the word of God. After we confess our sins, the priest gives us advice and, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we can act on that advice. Okay? Another way is when we do uh, the gospel reading and spiritual reading on our own. Okay? When we, when we uh, try to uh, read up on, uh, on uh, the precepts of the church or uh, what... Uh, what uh, the saints have experienced, okay, and all sorts of other things that we can nourish our spiritual life with, that is part of the Word of God and the will of God. Okay, what else? The different events of the day, you know, the very simple events of everyday life. There's so many things that happen to us in, in the course of one day. So many people we encounter at the course of a day. You know, these people, are instruments of God too, to reveal His will to us. The circumstances that happen to us every day are also avenues and channels by which God communicates His will to us. Okay? Now, how do we understand, how can we get to understand the Word of God, the will of God? I'm using the Word of God and will of God synonymously, right? In this case, interchangeably. Uh, how do we understand the will of God for us every day? I have, I have uh, uh, three recommendations. One, first one, is to pray for discernment. To pray, all the time to pray that we 
get to understand the will of God for us. Every time we encounter uh, circumstances during the day that, uh, that we don't quite get and we don't quite understand, instead of reacting uh, right away to these things uh, without thinking or praying, well, our first reaction should be to pray. When we hear the word of God at Mass or in a homily or, uh, or when we uh, go to confession and we get advice from the priest, we should dwell on these things. We should take them to heart in our prayer. We should pray about them. Spend a few minutes every day to be praying about these things. Make it a habit to always consult God and ask God, God, what do you want to tell me at this time? What do you want to express to me at this point of my life? What do you want to communicate to me through these circumstances of, of, of the day and through this meeting I have with these people? What is your will? What is your divine wish for me to do today? Okay? Let us make it a habit to pray, to pray all the time okay? about the will of God for us. And you know what? At the end of the day, we as a family do this collectively. We do this together. What part of the day do we do this? Okay, the examination of conscience at night, right? When we all gather together uh, uh, before going to bed and we, and we examine ourselves, we also examine the day, right? We examine the good things we did, the bad things we did, and the things that we can do better. So be, that way, we're trying to ask God what He wills for us and how we can fulfill the will of God every day of our lives. Okay, second recommendation. Second recommendation is for us to foster the habit of docility. Docility and humility in approaching the circumstances that we are confronted with during the day. To to be like to be like clay. You know, you 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 little kids, you, you like playing with clay, right? You know how clay is in your hands? Whatever shape you want to make of it, that's what the clay becomes, right? You want to make a pot, you shape the clay in a pot, it becomes a pot, right? When you bake it, it becomes a little teapot or whatever it is you want to make it. You know what? We have to be like clay in the hands of God, see? Like clay in the hands of a potter, okay? And that's also that's also scriptural, like clay in the hands of the potter. That is the way we should be obeying the will of God. Whatever God wants to make of us, we are as malleable and as docile and as humble as clay. See? So we have to imagine ourselves like clay in the hands of God who is the potter. The, the clay uh, uh, that he fashions into according to his own image and likeness. See, So we have to be docile. And number three, number three, the practical way of approaching the will of God would be to make resolutions. Okay? Resolution making is not only something done at the, end, uh, at the beginning of the year, okay? at New Year's. No. In fact, we have to be making resolutions every day. Right? What is the last question we ask ourselves in the examination of conscience at night? What are the Mia? Good I did today? Okay, what are the good things I did today which I could have done better? And which I will try to do better tomorrow. Right? So that is a por the part of the uh, examination of conscience where we try to make a resolution. What can I improve on tomorrow? What can I do better? In what, in what part of the will of God can I do better tomorrow? Okay? So let us make it a habit, folks, to make resolutions. To make resolutions. When we hear a homily from a priest uh, at Mass... What kind of resolution, what kind of takeaway is there for us to, uh, to, to, to dwell on and make a resolution about? When we uh, uh, come out of confession, what kind of a resolution do we make to improve our lives? When we do the examination of conscience at night, what kind of a resolution do we do in order to improve the following day's performance, the following day's uh, activities? So let us make it a habit to make resolutions so that we can really, really abide by the will of God. Okay, that's it for us, folks, on Catholic Best Practices today, Tuesday, September 26th. But Joseph has a question. What's your question? Bye! <laughs> you always want to have the last word. 
Okay. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Until tomorrow again, this has been um, Jake Leachko and Catholic Best Practices today. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you tomorrow. Bye.